Have you ever wondered how good or bad your local airport is compared to the rest of the world? Well, with so many people posting reviews on Google Maps, we decided to scrape all this data and find the top 10 best and worst airports in the world. The first thing we needed to do was get a list of all the airports in the world, which is easier said than done. After a little bit of Googling, we had to go all the way to page two. Oh my goodness. We finally found this website here, airport codes from datahub.io. I'll put a link in the description. So we downloaded the CSV and it contains a lot of airports like heliports, small airports, etc. We just restricted this analysis to large airports, which there are quite a lot of. And everything looks good. They give us the coordinates and everything. However, something's kind of strange with these coordinates. Let me explain. If I paste this one into Google, I end up in the middle of the ocean on an island. This definitely doesn't look like an airport. But if I swap them, then I end up directly in the middle of two runways about to get run over by a plane. So now at least we're in an airport. So the issue is that the CSV file gave us coordinates in longitude comma latitude format, but Google expects them in latitude comma longitude format. I was able to swap them in sublime text with some quick find and replace, but always make sure you check this because a lot of sites will swap them unintentionally. Now with all the airport coordinates, we can get the review data from Google Maps. We're going to scrape it using their official API, not one of those ridiculous screen scrapers that will end up getting your IP address blacklisted. So here are the endpoints, very simple. We can use the text search endpoint, which I recommend for most cases in discovering places on Google Maps. Check out the link in the description, I'll have this posted. And here for location, we can put in latitude comma longitude, which we got in that CSV file. And to make sure we only get airports back from Google Maps, we can scroll down and see this type parameter. And we can see all the supported types of businesses Google Maps support and we just put in airport. To get the data out of the API into CSV files, I'm using my own data scraping platform. Link in the description, disclaimer, it's a paid service, but it really helps the channel out. So here I just have to put in some of these coordinates into the location field like we saw in the API description, and this will substitute all my values into a request to the API. And you'll see Google actually gives me back a bunch of airports. I got 11 rows for this instead of just one. So that's fine, I'll take as many airports as I can get, and I can download all these in a CSV file. But what I really want to do is take all these 600 coordinates and then combine all the results together, which I can do using the workflow formula down here. I just import it into my account, paste in my list of coordinates, one per line, and I can see the platform gives me a preview. It'll make a request for each of those coordinates and get my results back. But before I run this, I also need to make sure I don't forget to put in type equals airport so I only get airports. Then I let this run for about 10 minutes and I get all my results back in a single CSV file. Wow, that was so much work. Now we can analyze the data using a Jupyter Notebook with Python. So we load up the CSV file and we drop all the duplicates here. We can see we deduplicate by place ID because we could get some overlapping coordinates. We eliminate any airports that are permanently closed. The other thing we want to do is only get airports with 100 total reviews because I've seen sometimes there will be duplicate airports where someone has a hard time finding the airport they want to review. They create a new one and mistakenly use that one instead of the main listing. So we get rid of those smaller ones and we get roughly 1400 airports. And here's just a quick preview of what the raw data looks like. We get the name of the airport, the address. We also get the rating and the number of ratings which we're going to be using to determine the best and worst airports in the world. We also get the latitude and longitude so we can plot them on a map. The first thing I want to do is calculate the mean or average rating, but I want to weight it by the number of total ratings. So a lot of those smaller airport ratings don't influence the mean. So I calculate the sum of the rating times the number of ratings and divide that by the sum of all the ratings here to get the mean rating per review, essentially, because we weighted by the number of reviews. And wow, it's pretty high. The average airport has a 4.19 out of 5 star review. Now I want to find the rating deviation. How much does each airport deviate from that mean? So I'm going to take the rating and then subtract 4.189 from that to get the deviation. And then I'm going to multiply that deviation by the number of ratings. This means that I want to punish airports that are below the mean and have a lot of reviews, which means a lot of people are saying it's not a great airport. And let's see what this looks like on a map because I needed a good thumbnail image for this video. So the size of each circle is the magnitude of the deviation times the number of reviews for each airport. So basically, Big means it's really good or bad, and small means it's kind of insignificant. There's not enough review volume, or it's not that far away from the mean. And green means the average review is higher than the mean, so they're good airports, and red means the average review is lower than the mean, so they're bad airports. All right, so what are the top 10 worst airports? Meaning the average review rating is lower than the mean, and they have a lot of these reviews, meaning a lot of people are likely complaining. So we're just gonna sort them by this value and get the first 10, which should all be negative and red. And we can see them here. Two are in the United States and the rest are in Europe. Now let's get down to the names. Please don't sue me airports, I'm just reporting the facts. 
All right, so the world's worst airport is Manchester Airport in the United Kingdom, with an average rating of only three stars over one star below the mean and 14,000 Google reviews. So what are people complaining about? Looks like the number one topic here is embarrassment. Jeez, this person says it's rubbish, complaining the escalators don't work, first world problems. They got some pictures here of it being really crowded, I guess. All right, next on the list is London, Stansted Airport in the United Kingdom again. What's going on here? Well, let's check out the reviews again. So we see 3.3 stars is a little bit better. It doesn't have an embarrassment in what people often mention. But it looks like they're complaining about the queue and passport control and more long lines and first world problems. And the third worst airport is in Paris, which is good news for the UK. All right, so 3.7 stars, not too bad. Just there's so many of these reviews, though, that it's below mean, which is why it showed up on this list. So I don't really see too many complaints here. This person says it improved. This person was really upset. They called it horrible because there's a lot of space for no reason. I mean, if that's not being pedantic, I don't know what is. And they posted pictures of there being a lot of free space. Number four worst is in Berlin, another European airport. And people are complaining about the signage, it looks like. I mean, geez, doesn't everyone have a smartphone these days? Why are you looking at the signs when you can just look at your phone? All right, and well, since this one is in English, I'll read it. It says they had to wait forever, and this person actually defends the signage. They said it's good. They just don't like waiting at passport control. Seems to be a reoccurring theme in European airports. And the fifth worst airport is in Greece, Heraklion. Oh, wow, only 2.8 stars. Well, this should be fun. It didn't make the top list because it has under 10K reviews, but it looks like it's a disaster. I mean, people are complaining about the cleanliness, the hygiene, and the soap even. People are saying that there's no soap in the bathrooms or anything, no air conditioning, yuck. All right, let's go through six through 10 very quickly. We have London again, which is strange. I mean, I've been to Heathrow and that's a nice airport. Then we have Newark and Los Angeles in the United States, Orly and Paris again, and then one in Barcelona. So mostly Europe and two in the United States. So now let's look at the top 10 best airports by reversing that list and we'll show the ones in green. And wow, talk about reversed, we're now south of the border. We're in South America and in Asia, specifically Saudi Arabia, Dubai, India, and Indonesia. And here's the full list like we saw before, but this time these are the best airports, with the best one being in Bogota. Here it looks like everyone's praising this biosecurity, so I'm not really familiar with that, but if it makes the line move by faster, then that probably explains why it's so popular. Second best airport is Sokarno Hatta, please excuse my pronunciation, in Indonesia, and wow, this one has a lot of reviews. Third best airport is in Bangalore, and wow, this one also has 70,000 reviews and people are really happy with the bus service. I guess it just gets people to where they need to go once they land or arrive. Fourth best airport is also in India, in New Delhi. Please excuse my pronunciation. So again, we can see, geez, 87,000 reviews and they are really happy about Air India and some of these pictures look pretty cool. Looks like a nice, clean, big, modern airport. And the fifth best is, no surprise, also in India, this time in Mumbai. People seem really happy with the interior at least and they post a lot of these pretty pictures. Looks like a pretty cool airport I've never been to yet. And number six through 10 is Dubai, no surprise there. We have more India, Hyderabad, we have Sao Paulo and Brazil, we have West Bengal in India, and then Doha. So according to the metrics we use, the worst airports are in Europe and North America, and the best airports are south of the border in South America and Asia, mostly in India specifically. And my personal reaction and question based on what we saw is that, is this really a commentary on the airports or the type of people who complain about the airports? I mean, it seems that maybe in Europe and America, or I'm from, is that we just hate waiting and it gets us really annoyed. Whereas maybe in South America or in Asia, people are just more chill and okay with waiting. I don't know. I really haven't been to those two continents. So please let me know in the comments if I'm wrong or what I'm missing.